Shri Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister of India, has wrapped up his three-day state visit to Guyana, a visit that holds much cultural and diplomatic significance to both Guyana and India. Several activities the Prime Minister were engaged in on Thursday before his departure, the highlight of which was his address to the National Assembly. And you may ask why it was important for Modi to address the National Assembly, particularly taking into consideration that these occasions are very rare. Um, and one of those significance is that while Modi's engagement with the government has been largely covered in the local press, uh, this is an opportunity for Modi to reiterate uh, those engagements with the government, to speak on the agreements signed between the two countries, and to really put all of that into the record of the National Assembly, the Hansard, as it is called. Myself and my colleague Vishani Radbir, we've been covering this trip extensively from Modi's arrival at the Chedi Chagan International Airport on Tuesday night. And Vishani will also speak on the significance of this address to the National Assembly. Sure. So it is important to know that it is quite significant for a visiting head of state, that is a president or a prime minister, to address Guyana's National Assembly. Now, the president of Brazil, President Lula Inácio Lula da Silva, did this in 2005. That's more than a decade ago, probably two decades ago, Correct. almost two decades ago. Correct. Now, Prime Minister Modi on Thursday addressed Guyana's National Assembly, and that was seen as an affirmation or a reaffirmation of the very strong bilateral ties between Guyana and India. Of course, uh, the visit by Prime Minister Modi itself is a historic and quite significant one. But like my colleague mentioned, there is an extra layer of significance that is added now that he has addressed Guyana's National Assembly, which is the law-making arm of government. Thank you, Vishani. I just want to continue as we speak about the significance and the importance of Modi really speaking to the National Assembly. Another significance is that while Modi's engagement has been, have been largely with the government of Ghana, this is an opportunity for him to engage with the parliamentary opposition. He will have an opportunity to meet the leader of the opposition, uh, Aubrey Norton himself, and I know that at the end of his address, there will be a group photo between the government MPs, the opposition MP, along with the Speaker and the Prime Minister of India. Um, but let me just uh, let you know that Modi's visit has been much more extensive than his address to the National Assembly on Thursday. He also held engagements, closed door meetings with the government on Wednesday, and he also engaged with the uh, other leaders of the region, CARCOM leaders, my colleague Vishani covered that and she will tell you more about sure. that engagement. So of course there's a lot of significance attached to Prime Minister Modi's uh, visit to Guyana for Guyana. But his visit was not one that concentrated just on India-Guyana relations, but it also focused on relations between India and the Caribbean community at large. Now, by way of context, relations between India and CARICOM started to formalize since in the 1980s, and there was real movement in deepening these ties in the early 2000s. But then in 2019, there was the first ever India-CARICOM summit at the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. On Wednesday, also after he met with the president in an event that was covered by my colleague, Kurt, uh, the prime minister met with regional leaders from the Caribbean community, CARICOM. And there he offered uh, a suite of measures that India is ready to provide to countries all across the region. He basically extended India's hand of friendship. And an important point he made was that India wants to support the region's needs and wants. Now, of course, the Prime Minister uh, meeting with those Caribbean leaders here in Ghana is significant because this is the first time the CARICOM India Summit is being held in a CARICOM member state. And it's being held in Ghana, which yes. is a founding member of CARICOM, and it's where the CARICOM Secretariat is housed. Right. But like I said earlier, this visit uh, was not all business. There was also some fun parts, and like we said, cultural significance to the Prime Minister visiting Guyana, where over 40% of the population can trace their ancestry back to India. And just as we're talking about the fun site, some other visits are to the Indian Arrival Monument, which commemorates the arrival of Indian indentured uh, laborers, not just the Guyana, but the Caribbean at large. And he will also be visiting the Mahatma Gandhi statue in the Promenade Gardens in Georgetown, where he will also pay tribute to Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the nation. 
um, Vishani, you want to talk to us. Of course, the Prime Minister is also visiting the Swami Vidya Nikitan School, uh, which is on the west coast of Demar, where he will meet with students, so they're not being left out of this engagement at all. He will also meet with members of the Indian diaspora and cricketers, because of course cricket is important to both Guyana and India. Right. And after a very packed schedule here in Ghana, he will be wrapping it up and heading back to his home country. Right, and let's not forget the seven curry engagement at State House yesterday, and of course the official state dinner. Through the Parliament of Guyana, I also invite the youth of Guyana to work together with Indian innovators and scientists. Collaborate, collaborate globally, globally and, and act, act locally. locally. This is the inspiration we can give to our youth. Through creative collaboration, global we can find solutions to global challenges. Friends, as the great son of Guyana, Sri Chedi Chedi Jagan once said, lessons from the past must serve as a guide for the present and help create a strong foundation for the future.